And I'd put it in the street to Beverly Hills and let people just experience it. And, and to me, that was an, it's an art form and it's, it's street art. And, and it's, to me, it's a falls into the performance art category and people come and I just watch them and take pictures and see what the reactions are. And, Hey listeners, this is Whitney Rosenson, owner and president of Art Dimensions in Los Angeles. Welcome back to my podcast, Beyond the Palette. I'm really excited to be interviewing Molly and Garen Swing today, a fantastic and impressive husband and wife duo. Garen Swing is a known artist, entrepreneur, and designer. His international scope of artwork ranges from commissioned art pieces for private clients to custom installations in public spaces like hotels. He has served the hospitality industry for over 30 years. Swing's art is his interpretation of abstract expressionism inspired by street art, fine art, and pop art. And Molly Swing is the former owner of Get Dressed Los Angeles, a high-end resale brick and mortar fashion boutique. She has been in the corporate fashion industry for the last 20 years, working in advertising for the likes of Guest Jeans, Ticketmaster, and Condé Nast Publications. Her most recent venture combined fashion and art as she hosted a weekly Instagram TV fashion segment called Shop Live with Molly Swing. They're opening a new art gallery in downtown. We're going to touch on that. All right. Hi, Garen and Molly. How are you? Hi, Whitney. How are you? Good morning. Good. Good morning. Thank you for guesting on Beyond the Palette and for welcoming all of us into your creative worlds. So I want to start by going back to the beginning. You both grew up in Los Angeles, and I believe, Molly, you grew up in Hancock Park. Is that right? Yes. Okay, Garen, where in Los Angeles did you grow up? Well, I would, I would definitely say the San Fernando Valley because um, I was born in Beverly Hills, but by the time that I could participate on my own on my bicycle, I was probably running amok in the valley. So if you could look at the eras, when the Sherman Oaks Galleria opened up in 1980-something, so I was like probably 10. So uh, the whole valley girl... Fast as Bridgemont High, hang out at the Galleria. Oh my God, that's I grew up across the street. My parents, well, my parents owned a very large. I would probably say uh, at least a uh, fifty to hundred yard uh, storefront on Ventura Boulevard across the street from the Hilton, which is um, catty corner of the Shermos Galleria. So my parents, I'm third generation designer. So my parents had a design firm on Ventura Boulevard that. Uh, had, it was a 25 room showroom and you had the likes of Michael Jackson. I want to say um, Pamela Sue Martin. I want to say like, you know, like, like from, you know, old, from, from like a, old, old. Yeah. I mean, this is, we're talking about the eighties. So it's, it's, you know, the, what was the TV show dynasty and, you know, and all these, yeah, it's, crest. yeah it's, they filmed stuff like that there. And, you know, a lot <laughs> of celebrities and whatnot, but I was a child. And so uh, that's kind of where, where I grew up. Okay. Okay. But that Hilton is no longer there, right? It actually is there. It's just, I think it's called something different. Oh, I know. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, then, then I, mostly, and as everyone knows, I, I pretty much grew up in Hollywood. I moved to Hollywood when I was 17 years old and, and I've lived there ever since. Or Los Angeles. I mean, it's, I bounced around. <laughs> I, I lived everywhere there is in Los Angeles, from Malibu to Santa Monica, all the way to uh, Calabasas to. Uh, oh, you lived everywhere. Yeah, and we would, I would literally, my parents were in real estate, so we had oh, maybe a, like quite a few homes at a time. You know, it was a very hard life of growing up in LA. <laughs> but, you know, so we, so, you know, maybe every year or two, they'd move to a new home and then they'd fix it up or, or maybe it's, you know, but sometimes we'd stay in a home for years on end. My next question touches on your childhoods. Were you both creative as youngsters? Very. I, myself, I, yeah. myself. Yeah. Well, I mean, I definitely was. I, I definitely was a creative for sure. Tell me about that. Like, what did you, did you play with? I mean, did you paint? Did you draw? Did I you was play? definitely, yeah, I was definitely drawn to like building things and art and dance and even like, you know, the whole like, you know, acting theater well, thing. Yeah, it's, it's also, it's the arts. I was definitely drawn to the arts and I really loved it. And I think it goes hand in hand with being very social in a lot of ways too, at least mm. the art that I was drawn to. And what about, and Garen, you were definitely creative as a youngster. Yeah, what so, you I get mean, your hands I mean, into? It, it, it's funny. I mean, when, when you're brought up in the Mecca of entertainment and you're born here, and I'm actually fourth generation Angelino, 
you, you don't you take it for granted you don't realize that you know you take the dance class down the street and you have like the i want to say the, the nelson brothers they're the two um african-american uh, tap dance phenomena you know and they're teaching a class there or you take karate down the street and it's chuck norris's karate studio so you, you really in the you don't really realize until you're older that everything you know in la that you might get involved in if it's dance i, I want to be I actually i wanted to be a choreographer i wanted um i wanted to be an animation um i mean everything that was in the arts i, I wanted to try you know as a child growing up and, and you would actually know someone or someone in my family was an animation or it was like ingrained in you yeah, so I, I think I think if you're if you wanted to do something in the arts, you know, you're 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 working with the best. I mean, yeah, it's, this um, is the. Then, but then that's like I said, I, I take it for granted. I don't realize that I was, you know, we're born into the industry. You know, the, my parents, you know, my family, my clients. You know, right. I say I didn't. You don't realize you're older. I know that it's all right there for you. Yeah, you know, even with friendship of friends growing up, you you're, you know you grow up with celebrity friends, and you don't realize that they're children of celebrities very true so you you grow up and you just think it's normal yeah and all right well we could go into that but let's let's go back how did you guys meet well we met through the arts through <laughs> well yeah through the arts and through a store that i had created in pacific palisades back in 2013 i had it for six years and we met sort of like really in the last year that I yeah, had my it, store. It, it, we met in BC in a long time ago, before, before COVID. <laughs> yeah, before COVID. I was like, what? <laughs> All right. And I know you guys started collaborating when you first met, right? I mean, what did you, how did it, how did your- It was a professional relationship. Okay. One of my clients, um, I, I guess, a, a, you know, ring the bell, like you say, you know, they say second. Um, it was a common friend that had purchased a low rider Louis Vuitton souped up bike by Garrett. It, it, it was a, so it's a lot of the art that I do is um, like sculptural or um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's something that, that, you know, the found objects or, or things that, that you know, I mean, it, it goes in the sculptural category. And so, so I re, a de, reconstructed a, a bicycle and, and made it gold and wrapped it in Louis Vuitton. And it was a real showpiece. And so I'm in the secondary market. So a uh, client brought the bicycle over to Molly and asked if she could resell it. You yeah, know, she and, did. And, and she did. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean, I didn't I mean, think I could doubled, sell it. Yeah, I mean, it, the price, it was, I mean, it's nice to find out that your prices are doubling. Um, she, she sold it to a collector out in Palm Springs. Molly called me immediately and said, um, what else do you have? You know, hi, you know, who are you? You know, what, what, what do you have? And, you know, technology today, within about two seconds, I just forward her about, you know, 10, 20 different pictures. And soon uh, she said, great. And then uh, I brought some, a couple paintings over and these Chanel inspired surfboards. And uh, there was, as fast as I was making the you know, products, custom commissions, they were selling. So, so we, our, our uh, relationship on the professional level really it bloomed. So yeah. cool. So organic. Really nice. And, and then of course, you know, I- He wasn't that, so bad on the eyes. Yeah. you know. I, I, <laughs> Asked her to dinner one night because I was hungry. So it happens she's beautiful and sweet as can, can be. And I mean, oh, <laughs> you guys are so impressive. I want to let's talk about your gallery. The Swing Street Gallery is opening August 19th. Is that yes. right? Yes. August 19th weekend. Okay. It's going to be in downtown LA. Tell us about or tell me about the vibe that's going to be happening at the gallery and how many artists you're working with and whatnot. Well, I, I want to say the vibe is um, very professional, very welcoming, and very inclusive. We have been lucky enough to partner with Rising Realty, um, who turned out to be um, one of the Loyola boys that I um, was in high school with, whose family has a very large real estate firm down to 10 LA, and they're kind of OGs, and they are in the business of buying beautiful uh, old buildings that they restored their original glory. So they bought the trust building and have restored it to just immaculacy. We were lucky enough to partner with them and be able to put a gallery on the ground floor of Spring Street um, facing, you know, Gallery Row. How many square feet is it? 
It's the 6,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. It's a raw space, but just perfect um, for- well, it's, built, it's built to suit for a gallery. Yeah, it's perfect for a gallery. We Sounds built perfect. Concrete, yeah. you know, the whole thing. Concrete walls, they're 18 foot high walls, all white um, with walls in the middle, track lighting. We've really, well, we built this, an, art studio, an art gallery. So cool. And what are you going to show there? What aren't we going to well, show? Well, we're that? representing nine. That's the question. Yeah, what aren't we going to show? We are representing a stable of nine artists that we are very happy with. Um, and what I love about it is it's from emerging to a very established. And that was actually one of the reasons why we opened this gallery, because after COVID, we found that there was major wait lists for uh, the kind of talent that is sitting here in LA that wants to show their work. And uh, Garen definitely runs with some pretty amazing, you know, OGs that deserve to have their work shown. And there just isn't, I feel like there's just not enough. There's not enough galleries, well, it's, physical it's, space. Well, well actually, it's it, <laughs> right? <Or> that's <laughs> back to the LA story. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of galleries, just like there's hundreds and hundreds of dry cleaners. We cater to a, a certain style and a certain, I want to say my contemporaries, that we're in, we're, we're, I'm lucky enough to be involved with a group of uh, artists that are the original artists that, that I want to say pioneered street art. Um, I mean, that, that would that'd be out of my age group, but that continue to pioneer. Can you name a few of those? That we, that, well, not the ones we, that we're representing right now, but then again, yes. I mean, Pep Williams is going to be on our show. Um, Anti um, will be in our show. And, and both of these gentlemen have been in like beyond the streets and um, other, um, you know, it's it, they, once you start hit, hitting a certain level of art, you're you're kind of um, it's how weird to talk about myself in this in this uh, vein. So I don't know. I, I mean, you could quite each artist that. has an amazing story behind them, and for me, again, talking about the vibe is, you know, this is obviously, you know, I'm I'm more on the business side of things, but. It's sales. And to me, we are selling art and we are selling the person behind the art. So the people that are going to come in, what's important to me and the way we market this whole thing is I want my buyers to really know these artists and to know their stories. And then to know, of course, know the art that's attached to them because buying pieces that are high end like this, you know, $5,000 and up, um, these are investments and they go into very intimate spaces you know, your home, your home office, office era, yeah. that you have to look at every day. And so to me, it's, you know, being a gallery that will really push and use all the different marketing tools, you know, AKA social media that we got very well versed in during COVID, just like in real estate, you know, people that are using those tools uh, are going above and beyond for what they are selling. And so for me, we're trying to promote these artists. It's important that everybody learn about who these people are and so beautifully said i i love that <laughs> if you'd like to know who my contemporaries are um, my contemporaries i was just on a show um last year in december uh, for me it was it was a, it was quite um an honor and i showed with the likes of banksy basquiat shepherd fairy scene um risk retina um mr brainwash cause futra wow was this the malibu show no, <laughs> this, is Texas. A, this is yeah. This is a, no. The Malibu shows are are local artists, and we're, we're there. You know, you know, Risk is shown there, but uh, Brian Bowden, the Brian photographer, Bowen Smith, yeah. you know, this photographer. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start looking at local, you know, I, I try to participate. I really love participating. You know, hence being on this. You know, thank you for asking us to be on this. By the way, the difference between I think your average artist. I mean, I've I've, I've been in the industry my whole life, growing up as a professional, and you know, I mean there's one side I would say, well, I'm a commercial artist. I'm a professional. I've been in the industry mm -hmm. forever. And, and so with that being said, I, I, I love the arts. Um, I, I support other artists. I have other artists that I work with, collaborate with, support. And, and I feel that because of the art industry, it's probably like a lot of industries. If you look at like sports and any other um, business, it's competitive. Absolutely. So, 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 you know, I think, you know, the average person sees an artist, you know, like, oh, he's an artist, he wears black, or he's an artist and he has paint all over him. We, there, there's a perception of what an artist looks like, or, or what an artist does. And the truth of the matter is, if, if you're a real artist, you end up having to become a businessman, or you have to hire, you know, someone to manage you. I mean, you know, the, this, the idea of this recluse, crazy artist, 
you know, that someone's kind of managing this drug addict craziness is in the movies or that's, that's maybe the aftermath. You know, the, the, the real reality is that, that this is a business and that a, the artists that I even named are multi, there's a the lot of money. They're museum, their museum. Yes, I mean, I mean, artists. I mean, just the creating, the creating and shipping of most of the art that I do and in my contemporaries costs more than the average person pays for a painting. Mm -hmm. Just the creating alone. Well, is the gallery opening open to the public? And if so, where can people get tickets? So the tickets are sold on Eventbrite and they that can be accessed. Uh, the link can be accessed through our Instagram, which is at Swing Street Gallery. Great. And we also have a website, swingstreetgallery.com. Great. And this is August 19th and August 20th, right? Yes. Okay. On Spring Street, downtown LA. I'm going to be there. I can't wait to see what you guys are showing down there. I, I forgot, but I mean, besides our gallery, I'm doing uh, um, this August. I, I know this is going to come out in the future, but uh, but this August, the 6th, this weekend, um, I will be displaying a new piece of art, Shepherd Ferry. Um, Obey just did a huge mural in Culver City in the Culver City Art District. I should say the ribbon cutting unveiling on the 6th and the 7th. And there's going to be a pop-up art show with also the most, um, I mean, I could read, read the roll call, top artists in the world also um, will have their art display too. It's um, But that sounds super cool. Yes. I'm, 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 and so I am uh, doing this piece that will be, um, I do all kinds of art. So I'm not just the guy that just does, you know, one style. I have, you know, hopefully most people can recognize my work, but the idea is that I, I like experimenting and trying different things. And right now I'm working on a piece, which um, I do, it's kind of illegal. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a form of street art and I do what's called bill posts. And there are posters that I go around town and I put up similar to, obviously Shepard Ferry's probably the most recognized artist that would do that. Um, when I was 18 years old, I met Robbie Cornell's uh, street team. And they're all of women, by the way, which is really amazing. There's a group of women um, that started in the, uh, I wanna say late eighties. Um, and they went around putting up political posters everywhere. Um, there's a big one right now, obviously with a Wade uh, situation going on. And, and so with, with this type of uh, street art style of doing a bill, bill post that I've been doing for quite a while, there's a style that I wanted to do. And what that is, is around Los Angeles, and I want to say it's because of the pandemic or, or whatnot, a lot of construction has, um, the construction walls have been up for, for years now because of these high rises that take years to build. And because of the, the um, barricades being up for years on end, the advertising and the bills that have gone up over the, the last years are hundreds, I would even say thousands of, of piece of paper that have been glued on over and over and right, over. Right, one on top of the other. So it, we're, we're talking about inches of paper. And you know, when you buy a, a pack of paper that you put in your, you know, a printer. Printer, I almost said Xerox, I'm showing my age. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Xerox machine. Um, yeah, in the, <laughs> in the printer, you know, you, you look at a stack and what is it like? Was a thing like that, mm -hmm. you know, a thousand. So there has to be hundreds of them. And so what I did is I pulled, so over time it's, it's, de it's decaying in a sense, because it's so heavy. So this papers and this paper, if, and I'm sure people drive around town, they notice these ads. And, and now today it's actual, instead of artists doing that, this is also a, a way of um, showing um, advertisement. And this is, uh, and I'm going to segue into my gold digger series and why, I, why I did this. And so you know, it's to kind of, so I, I try to do everything for a reason. It's a thought that I have and I get really excited. The more I think about it, the more it makes sense. And then, and then and the more it just comes to fruition. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a kind of really rad idea. And, and then it just grows and grows and it becomes mine. And, and so I want to do something with these, you know, heavy paper that's been on the, these walls for years on end. And so I went downtown and I grabbed a section. So these piece, these, these walls are approximately the size of two, uh, uh, plywood. So, so they're about eight feet tall and they run across, you know, 25 feet across a, in front of a whole entire building. So I pulled these pieces of paper off that are so thick and I brought it back to my studio and because they're still wet and, and, and just kind of, you know, it's all made from paper. 
started de de uh, taking it apart a little bit and, and not even on purpose. It just kind of starts falling apart because it's I know like a, what you found too. I was, yeah. I, yeah. Oh, that's right. You saw that. And so, yeah. so as, as, as I was opening it up, my assistant said, oh, look, there's, there's a obey, a shepherd fairy piece in, in, in the piece that you grabbed. And I said, no, it's not, you know? And she said, yeah, look right there is obey. And so coincidentally, just out of, I mean, just pure accident, I, I'm, I'm doing the show coming up. So it was such a nice fit. And, and so um, after I'm reconstructing this piece and it's, it's, it's a three feet by four foot piece, and on the sides, it's called deckling. I hand deckled all the sides where you can see the hundreds and hundreds of pieces of paper in all different colors. So, so it, it's, it's, it's uh, like, like a rainbow of a tree and seeing all the, the rings of the tree. And you oh, can very see cool. the hundreds and hundreds of layers and all the colors of different papers that were there previously. So it's, it's really gorgeous. I'm really pleased to um, show it. I was just asked last night by Bruce Luer Galleries if I would show it at his gallery, which are to me that's he's one of the top um, galleries and actually the world because there's uh, the lures have four brothers and there's they're in Miami, New York, and Los Angeles. That's exciting. That's amazing. Yes, I, I mean every day is just so much amazing things happening that I, I don't, a lot of times I don't get the luxury of talking about it because you know just so fast. This I mean, is so I know right one be the, the roll call of this weekend's um, artists and so you guys can understand the um, kind of caliber of artists I work with. You have um, Amanda Lynn, um, Antonio Paleo, uh, David Arquette, um, David Flores, Dave, uh, David Sanchez, Estevan Oreo with the famous LA Fingers. I mean, I'm skipping here and there, but you have, you have Jim Evans, you know, Taz. Let's see here. You have uh, Risk. Uh, you have. Wow. Is Ned Evans on that list? Oh, you, know, you said Jim Evans. Yeah, Jim Evans. How's this one? I've done quite a few pieces. Uh, uh, shows with this guy. His name's Tristan Eden. Tristan Eden to me is the, this guy is so amazing. The most amazing uh, graffiti artist. He's actually doing a huge mural right now. At, I would say like on Highland and Hollywood Boulevard next to the Capitol building. So you can go drive it. All right. So everyone should go. You have to see it. Everyone should see it. it. It says something to the effect of uh, California or, or something. I have It's not complete yet, but it, it is phenomenal. Would you ever consider doing a mural? Yes, I do lots of murals. Oh, you do? Yes, I, I, I have a, yeah, I mean, this list goes on. At the end of last year. Um, After Art Basel. Yeah, on the, way, on the way to Art Basel, I think. Um, prior to that, I did a mural for Gladys Termenez, and she's a hat uh, millinery. I'm probably not. not Gladys Termenez. Yeah, if I'm not pronunciating her name properly. And she is a world-renowned um, hat maker. Um, she did the famous hat, or uh, quite a bit of hats, not just this, the hat, um, for um, Lady Gaga and her, from oh, her yes. cover hat to her music videos, to her concerts, all those wild hats she wears, she, she makes. And that's just one out of hundreds of celebrities. And you did the mural for her store. Yeah, for the, out, the front of her, her storefront. I, I, I did her logo and a, a beautiful mural, my style. It's 100% my style. That was uh, that's so oh, that really beautiful. Nice. An art show, a pop-up art show there also, which was very successful. So at the end of the year, um, you know, we had the horrible news of Virgil passing. And um, I had the opportunity to work uh, for Off-White. And I did a, uh, for Maxfield, I did a installation mm -hmm. there. Okay. On Melrose? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A yeah. And Malibu. Okay. Uh, also. You are just so prolific. And and, and so uh, by working with Off-White, it was amazing. And then they have... Um, Forense week, which is like a furniture art. It's art, another art, um, it's like art basil, but like, I want to say for, the, I want to say more on tier design. Okay. World, and it's called a forense. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's a uh, more oriented to furniture and FF &E, a, a lot what I'm very involved in. I did his installation and, and I worked with him again on that. So, you know, and, and he also works with a lot of people that I work for like Chrome hearts and Louis Vuitton. So, so it was, it was, uh, with that being said, I, I, I did a, um, I want to say a, a mural, you know, dedicated towards him. And it was a uh, approximately, I don't know, fifty feet by fifty feet. It was, it was very large. I mean, a wow. very large, very very large mural. And, and you can see it on my social media too. It's, it's in there. You do murals. You do paintings. Yeah. You do sculpture. You do public art installations. What influences your art now? And what influenced your art when you began your career? Are those different? 
Yes, 100% different. I mean, when, when I began my career, I, th I think I was uh, drawing Ninja Turtles. No, I was kidding. I, mean, I was young. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, they, those were only invented when I was a kid. My younger years, I, I, I was very um, inspired by my family. My, my, my mother's interior designer, my father's a designer. And because of them um, being designers, they had a staff of artisans. And if you think back prior to computers, um, to pr prior to CAD and 3D renderings, my family had two renderers that worked in the back of their art, you know, in their showroom that rendered every single drawing that they would propose to celebrities and clients and whatnot. So if, you, if you're, they were going to design your bedroom, they would have a guy that would hand draw on poster board and paint with for a little bit of color with, and they were phenomenal. Actually, it was Tom Allen. I showed you his work that, that it looks like Monet. It's, it's impressionism. That's what, that's what he really did. You know, a lot, you know, you find out a lot of artists have these side jobs. <laughs> so, but um, the, the reality is growing up watching these, these guys who do renderings so fast. I mean, they, they, that was the key. These guys are professional guys that would knock out a rendering in maybe an hour. I mean, just huge renderings and then throw yeah. some more color colors in there. And you know, that so, really so, influenced you. Yeah. And, and, and then, and then my uncle, and then I didn't really realize this until I got older, but my uncle, he was French and he was married to my mom's sister and he did animation. He did the original Pillsbury, Pillsbury, Pills, Pillsbury Doughboy, the little, remember in the, the finger? Yes. Was animation. Was coming in the tummy. And, and, and he worked on a lot of different kind of animation and he was French and, you know, and, 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 and I didn't really realize growing up in an artistic family, you know, I always thought they were kind of hippies in a sense, but they're far from hippies. They're wealthy. And, 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 and there's the, the idea of just being arts and, and having bongo. I, you know, my parents didn't have this in the house, but seeing bongos in the house next to a grand piano to me was, was artsy oh, and, yeah. and, and very cool that you could, you know, the, the, and so they pushed the arts, you know, everybody was very, very much into the arts. And, and I didn't really realize at the time. So, so I, I think that had a huge influence on a commercial side and, and not, actually knowing that that art is around me everywhere mm -hmm. today what influences me is at 10 years old my art was sent to the white house to be displayed i went to a school called buckley and so this is this is where my art ended up at in fourth grade mm. after that um i, I wanted to obviously want to get into animation and and uh, doing paintings and just all kinds of art. And like I said, I wanted to be a choreographer, just anything to do with moving, dancing, painting, you know, singing. And <laughs> that, was, that was kind of like, you know, if, if, if you read the uh, report from school, uh, mostly always said something like, your son's an amazing artist, loves to dance and sing, wish he would do his homework. <laughs> you know, I wish he wouldn't do it during class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? That's hysterical. Yeah, we, I wish he wouldn't sing and dance and play the piano <laughs> during class. But other than I love that, it. My, my, I have a very lengthy career, uh, so I can go on forever about it. But to, to fast forward to, to get up to date, um, I started off in you know high school. I mean, all the way through school, I was very involved in the arts. I, I won many awards for student film festivals, um, for animation, pixelation, um, claymation, and actual, and then um, animation. And then from there. Um, I want to be a graphic designer. I went to school for graphic design. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I was a, uh, that, that's where I was um, pretty much in, in school. And I was taking, you know, photo re, it was called photo retouch. And back then there was no computers, as I said. So you would learn how, how to do photo retouch with an airbrush on actual uh, photos. Wow, wow. So, so, so with that said, um, I went for a job interview at 17 years old. Um, they told me to quit school. Um, they went to the same school that I did. That was a, and they were going to Otis Parsons and Pasadena College of Design. They said, drop out of school, come work for us. You'll learn more from, from us in one month than you will in the rest of the school year. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was 17 and I said, it sounds great. I um, <laughs> became the assistant art director for Screamers Magazine. Um, before I was even 18 years old, moved out of my parents' house, moved to Hollywood. Um, I started getting very involved in the club scene and the LA underground art scene. I did a mural for Billy Idol, probably at 19 years old for a concert, the whole backdrop. Um, I can go on and on. I, uh, at probably 19, I, I did a, a collaboration painting with Bono from U2. I mean, literally, oh I my just, God. It, it's never stops. I, so I lived, fun. So my fun. first art studio was underneath Herb Ritz, the photographer. And sure, sure. I'll fast forward. I had a full career doing uh, commission paintings forever. And about 
Uh, a little over 10 years ago, I was asked by uh, Lisa and Eddie, and, and they represent like Gregory Sif today, which is a very well-known artist. Yeah, um, yeah. To, to come down and, and participate in a Fame Fest, which was on Melrose Art District at the time when they started doing food trucks. which was very innovative at the time. This Correct, is when the, right. food truck, the whole food truck craze started. And, I, I, and um, we started doing art in these art shows and it went viral. And, and I was working for Slash at the time. You know, and so I was designing his house and selling him art. And I've always sold art. I have a very uh, large celebrity clientele list. And so I've always worked doing uh, personal paintings. I really didn't think, you know, for me personally to do art shows and galleries to me um, really was just about showing art, you know, the ego part of it. Cause I was always working, selling art. I, I thought, why would I have to do art show? But because I was asked to do this art show in uh, 2011, I, I agreed and it was street art. And so the big article that came out immediately was Garen Swing, uh, established artist goes back to street art. And if you understand the history of street art, it's mostly guys that kind of run around the street as kids with spray painting, graffiti, and then they work on their trade. They get it out to the masses, people start to recognize the name, the lot mm -hmm. style, mm -hmm. and then here we are, are they, they've gotten some notoriety from us. And these this group of people that I'm referring to, my friends I grew up with, you know, these LA originals, there's, there's a documentary on Netflix, you can read about it and, or watch it or whatnot. And, you know, I'm so, so be, being grow, grown up in LA royalty, let's say, um, of the street scene, um, this is where I, I landed in 2011. And so for the last, um, now we're going to going on 11 years of just pushing hard in the art scene. And so it's been a really fun adventure. Um, I start off with uh, my old style. I have some stencil work that I'm a stencil artist um, for over 30 years. Well, even longer than that. But but the reality is that I have my original stencils. And that was a, that was a, that was a big push, you know, that to have that kind of longevity, decades of being in the, in the street scene. And I brought that to, to the forefront. On my second show, um, my big first solo show, um, well, it was my first, but it, it was it, for this new style. So it was the first style, it was this Gold Digger series. And I did that in 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. I started playing around this whole Gold Digger. So when, okay, the Gold Digger series, would you consider the Gold Digger series, Molly, a fashion inspired art series? 100%. Why, tell me why. Okay. so. The Gold Digger series started off with street art um, poking fun at the industry um, I, because I work in the industry um, and that's kind of, that, that was like the whole Virgil thing. It, that's how I started working for, for these big brands, Ben Balenciaga and Issa Laurent. I started poking fun at Couture because the, the idea that, you know, every people are putting, you know, money, Couture, fashion, everything at this you know, iconic, you know, pedestal of life, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, and, and it's become this, you know, uh, I want to say that like this God, God-like industry. industry, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, it, 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 this, this holy grail of, of needing this, this idea that I have to have this, this, you know, th this idea that this, this value is, is to, is to die for. And it's somehow like, reflects your own value as a person right. and so 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 as as an artist going to los angeles working in fashion I've, I've, I've worked in fashion and film you know the entertainment industry literally my whole life and so it, you know poking fun at it and saying hey you know and 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 the truth is i do love fashion i do love diamonds and gold and money who you know it's it's fun i mean i don't you know i don't think anyone was ever grew up and said, I want to grow up poor, you know, or I want to, right. I, I, I don't I like to be broke, you know, it, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the idea that, that, that we all, you know, these kids today, it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like famous. So, so this whole like pinnacle of, of what we want in life, you know, is I have to poke fun of it. So, so with that being said, I started doing these paintings, you know, I, I've obviously, we've all seen them before, Chanel, the Louis Vuitton, you know, you know, Paris, we, you know, it's, it's fashion orientated and money orientated. And, and instead, so doing a twist on it, I started this first piece I, I did was a, um, there's a construction sign. Um, I, I'm sure it's all over the United States, but I know it's definitely privy in Los Angeles. Um, and, and there, it's a, orange um, diamond and you see it when you're driving and you come up to construction it'll be a it look it's a silhouette of a man that's digging 
to tell you that there's digging or trenching or some type of construction ahead when you're driving. And Los Angeles is filled with construction. And I noticed that it's a man digging. And it's, it's like I said, it's a black silhouette. It's kind of like the, you know, the crosswalk man. But you altered it. You did. Yeah. And I put a dress on him and, and I put, so it's a black, so I changed the, the shape that I added a dress at the bottom, kind of like a bathroom sign, just a silhouette. And then where the mound of dirt is and, the, the, and this guy shoveling, I turned into gold leaf. And I went around town. I did, I changed up quite a few signs around Los Angeles that, you know, instead of, you know, digging ahead or whatnot, it was a woman digging. And, and when I put the gold pile of gold, it became gold digger ahead. So the, the idea is <laughs> gold digger ahead. You're, so, you know, so I'd put these signs, reinstall them at the entrance of Beverly Hills, Palisades, Melrose, West Hollywood. <laughs> I, you know, so as you enter these areas, you'd be like gold but digger. Beware, it's like beware. Gold, yeah, beware, gold digger ahead. And then I started doing these fun installations in the street where literally I, I was taking in Beverly Hills, I would take this woman and she was, it was a mannequin and I'd dress her up in all this like, costume jewelry and then I did this thing in the ground and I had a shovel uh, and it was wrapped the shovel was gold with Louis Vuitton wrapped real Louis Vuitton wrapped around it it was a huge inspiration and and I'd put it in the street to Beverly Hills and let people just experience it and, and to me that was an it's an art form and it's 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 street art and and it's to me it's a falls into the performance art category and people come and I just watch them and take pictures and see what the reactions are and it brings it, so it brings fun fabulous. and joy and conversation you know it it's to provide evoke a the conversation um, right yeah like what is this what with a gold digger you know and it, it's fun and so then i started changing the the quotes around you know changing you know maybe coca-cola doesn't say coca-cola maybe you know um chanel doesn't say chanel but but the font and everything's the same so when you see it your mind tells you it says chanel but it says something else and so it's really playing with words our mind what we perceive what we want and and uh, it's been quite successful and that's actually how i met molly uh, by selling her a lot of this couture uh forward forward yeah uh, from the gold digger series yeah from yeah. the gold digger series and then so today i'm up you know and that goes back to this piece i was talking about earlier with the shepherd fairy piece you know all these bill posts is all about advertisement you know a lot of people running around going like i'm woke oh my god i i i realized that that like everything we know is because of advertising and really there's no difference but it's like yes this is what i grew up doing you know graphic design everything is that we see in life has been designed for us to accept that vision. So yeah, I'm pretty heavy into uh, you know the idea of the meaning behind what I do. It's 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 to poke fun and to also bring attention and awareness to you know like what's really going on, what 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 what, what is important in life, you know, and, and yeah. So I guess Chanel is very important. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell the listeners, you guys have three websites because this art is so incredible. You have to check it out. It's there's garenswing.com and it's G U E R I N swing.com. That's just art. Okay. That's paintings and your sculptures. Then we've got garendesign.com and swingstreetgallery.com. Correct. Yes. This was so fun, but I have one last question I have to ask. And it's just a three word answer. If you had to just had to describe your aesthetic in three words what would they be what's the demographics of reviewers because three words is fun fucking fantastic <laughs> okay <laughs> that's one word that's one oh they said three words yeah three words does not stop i love it all right i want to thank you guys so much for guesting on beyond the palette uh, make sure you check out Garen's art. You can also check us out on Instagram at Art Dimensions and at Swing Street Gallery. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And to Molly and Garen, have an amazing week and happy creating.